The Elite versus the Death Triangle match falls count anywhere in their best of seven series. So the first half of this match was every 1988 Monday Night Raw hardcore match you ever saw, just with smaller guys doing more flips. Dude, we got seven matches, brother. We got to do something. Something different. The most notable thing that happened backstage, uh, Pac goes, I think it was, it was definitely Pac, and I think it was giving Omega a brain buster under a stack of pallets, which, okay, fine, I see that. But if you're going to do this, do it so, like, the edge of the stack of pallets might poke you in the back instead of the corner? He was, like, exactly the wrong way, lined up the wrong way, where if something had gone wrong, he would have been stabbed in the back by the corner of this wood. But now he's Pac, so nothing went wrong, but that scared the hell out of me. Uh, there were two table spots backstage. I want to note this. this uh, I mean, Phoenix put somebody through a table, and the Bucks put somebody through a table. And so eventually they fight down the ramp, and they get in the ring, and they go to commercial, and when they come back from commercial, this match was so much better. Bodies flying everywhere. Places going insane. It's falls count anywhere, so they're doing the fear factor on the floor, the melt melted driver on the floor, not finishes. The crowd starts chanting for tables, which we had already seen twice. That annoyed me. Uh, so Matt accidentally super kicks Nick and Nick is gone and uh, Pac puts Matt in the brutalizer. And there's no one there to make the save because Omega hasn't been seen in a while. But then we cut to somewhere else in the building. Omega is on top of a thing. He hits Phoenix with a one winged angel through some sort of platform and he gets the pin on Phoenix seconds before Matt taps out to the brutalizer. Whole lot of chaos going on here. But that makes it uh, sets up match yeah, seven. Yeah, but I thought that was a very, very clever finish that they did right there where dude's about to submit, but hey, it's a falls count anywhere match. We got multiple refs. We got dudes outside the ring. And so uh, no hammer. No hammer. There was no hammer. Uh, one, yeah. Yep. Kenny Omega got to hit Phoenix with the, uh, the one-winged angel, which he tried to do six matches ago. And uh, got hit with a hammer and beaten. He finally hits it, goes through the table, gets the pin. Matt then taps. Pac thinks he's won, but it's too late. The other guy already already got pinned. So that was a very clever way that they did this. And now we do have, in fact, the final match, which is coming up in Los Angeles. And, uh, yeah, the backstage stuff was just whatever. But, man, they got out in that ring, and that match was awesome. And this was a match where I realized they are in Denver. They are doing all of this sprinting and jumping yep. and high-flying and craziness a mile up. And uh, apparently it was, uh, you know, from talking to different people on the show, it wasn't that bad. It was uh, oh. not as bad as they expected it to be. That's good. But uh, yeah, he's still doing a match like this in, in, at altitude. It's pretty impressive. So good match. That was awfully insane. We also watched NXT, WWE NXT. That was a great ramp. That was a great dynamite, by the way. That was a great show. Dude, between the They've dancing had a match. a string of great shows. The dancing match, the B Blackpool Combat Club match. Uh, there was a third. Oh, the, uh, the like, e even, like, we're, we're, we're almost spoiled by elite and death triangle matches now. Like, I, five years ago, that would we have been. We are spoiled. On the show. And I was like, oh, look, the elite and death triangle had another four-star trios match. Okay, great. <laughs> we just move on with our lives. We were totally Well, spoiled. you know what's funny? I was thinking about this during the match. You know, there's a lot of people, because of this whole CM Punk thing, that uh, they hate the elite. And there are a lot of people that are uh, very negative about uh, AEW for one reason or the other. And there are a lot of people that'll pick out this, and they'll pick out that. And uh, it started as a best of seven. Actually, it didn't start as a best of seven. It started as a championship match. Then they changed it to a best of seven. And then, uh, you know, then they changed the rules five matches in. Now we've got all these stipulations and everything. And there's complaining about this and nitpicking this and nitpicking that. Dude, I was watching that match last night, and I thought, you know what? If we go back in 20 years... And we watch, like we did with the uh, Retro Raw Nitro, if we go back and we watch like uh, 20 years ago in AEW, and, you know, we're not reading all of the observers or going back and getting all the whatever. We're just watching the shows. Dude, we would be watching the last five weeks of TV and going, this is fucking amazing. Yeah. yeah. These fucking matches every single goddamn week, they're all fucking amazing. They're great matches on free TV with finishes every single week. Dynamite is one of those shows where in real time, because of Twitter and podcasting and boards and Reddit and everything... People are watching it in a certain way, 
But it's one of those shows that when you look back on it in 20 years and you just like go through and watch Dynamite shows, you're going to be like, holy shit, these shows were fucking great. Yeah. That's what I got out of this. There's a lot of criticism about professional wrestling. You all right over there? What's going on with you? There's up with the mic. Sorry. No, what do you need so much water for today? It's coffee. Put that away. Crying out loud, it's nighttime. You're not going to be able to sleep. <laughs> you have to have another drink right now. God help me. Now, where was I? People didn't like this so much, I hear. I can't even remember what I was angry about. I got, I got a question. Is anyone else thirsty? How did I not see I'm, that? I just, uh, you absolute... God, I hate everybody on this show. It's not an issue of whether the listeners can hear it. I don't care about you. It's about me. Sociopath. God. Jeez. Me? Yeah. Now my wife is texting me, Craig. I hope you're happy about that. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.